Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, January 19th. If 2021 already seems like too much, there is a hotline that urges you to call in and scream. It's for real. We actually called and checked the number. <laughs> so uh, this hotline called Just Scream, a hotline created by elementary school teacher Chris Gallmer, aims to reduce tension for those needing an outlet. All you have to do is call the out hotline and scream for as loud as you want and for as long as you want and then hang up. He said, I wanted to find a prompt that people would respond to and screaming seemed to be a good fit. And so uh, Galmar, who's said he's been an artist and coder since he was a kid, spends his free time working on art projects and that invite people to call a phone number and leave a voicemail for others to hear. And this time he said he thought it would be funny and unique to create a phone line just for screaming. So what you do is you, you call in, you scream, you follow the prompts and you hang up. Uh, after people dial in, their call, dial in, their calls are recorded and then put on the website. Uh, why should, oh, let's see, why should you call the website asked to scream? You might be unhappy, terrified, frustrated, or elated. All these perfectly good reasons to call and scream, but those personal phone numbers are not stored and all calls go to an answering machine. Now, according to the website, there's currently a backlog of over 40,000 screens waiting to be uploaded, uh, uploaded. And you better hurry if you want to participate in this. You see the number right there on your screen, but we'll go ahead and give it to you too. And it's also there on our banner. It is one. 561-567-8431. If I said that too fast, go ahead and just scream now. <laughs> One, 561-567-8431. Gallmer said the hotline's gonna stop accepting calls in a couple days on the 21st. Yeah, but they're gonna post it on their website, so it'll mm -hmm. be very interesting. So I actually called, but I'm in the newsroom, so I, I didn't scream. Right. Mine would be silent. So if you're not already married and you don't have somebody to scream at, uh, you can consider this as an option. <laughs> For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Security measures have kicked into high gear at the nation's capital to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration tomorrow. Meanwhile, the FBI continues to make more arrest connections with the riot at the Capitol as investigators examine what kind of organization and planning might have gone into the incident. First Lady Melania Trump is saying goodbye. She tweeted a farewell video message Monday as she prepares to leave the White House. This was her first on-camera appearance since the January 6th insurrection on the Capitol. She hasn't been seen in public since New Year's Eve. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is reporting that at least 122 confirmed cases of the new COVID-19 variant are in the U.S. About 60% of the more than 24 million confirmed COVID cases in the U.S. reported since Election Day 2020. Meantime, the number of COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals is hitting another record high. There are now more than 1,500 people in the hospital here in Bear County. More than 1,200 new cases were reported yesterday, along with three more deaths. A powerful earthquake struck northwestern Argentina near the border with central Chile late last night. The U.S. Geological Survey said the tremor had a preliminary magnitude of 6.4. There were no injuries but reports of power outages and damage to some buildings. Research shows smartwatches may be able to detect the virus by showing small changes in users' heartbeats. In the study, the pattern detected the COVID-19 virus at least a week before symptoms showed up, allowing plenty of time to isolate. Samsung confirms its future phones will not come with chargers and earphones. One executive says the removal will be gradual. The company says older USB charging ports still work with newer Samsung devices. NASA is planning three separate missions for Mars in February. One of those missions will allow the people here on Earth to hear sounds from Mars for the first time. Coca-Cola releasing its new soda coffee drinks is a mix of the classic soda plus Brazilian coffee. The beverage is available in three flavors, dark vanilla and caramel. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Yay, more caffeine. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live camp. 66 degrees, pretty mild, kind of humid. And you're going to need some caffeine to wake up today because it's dreary, cloudy, kind of rainy. It's going to be that way most of today. We've got a frontal battery coming through and showers a good bet even into the afternoon. Let's start with the radar, show you where the rain is right now. Just some light stuff, small showers tracking off to the north through the city of San Antonio. There's some drizzle out there, too. It's not going to show up on radar, but it is there. So we've got wet roads uh, looking off to the east, some showers around Seguin and Gonzales. And these work their way up by 35. 
as well. Bigger picture, it, there's not a lot of coverage right now, but again, we do expect that it will pick up a little bit more, uh, especially tonight. There is the frontal boundary. Right now it is through Del Rio and Rock Springs, but sits to the north and west of San Antonio. There is some cool air behind it. Tomorrow promises to be a cool, damp day. Mountain Cedar jumped up 9,270. That's the latest count. And mold also jumped up. It's in the high category, so not a great day for allergy sufferers. Hopefully with a little bit of rain, that Mountain Cedar number comes down. Temperatures today will probably peak right after lunch. Uh, upper 60s and then the numbers fall off behind that front about a 60 percent chance of rain through the afternoon and evening guys. Thank you Justin top stories we're following today a deadly motorcycle crash involving an 18 wheeler closed parts of loop 410 between I 37 and South WW right white road this morning. Police tell us two people on motorcycles lost control of their bikes and caused the semi to roll over. This happened just before midnight. Police tell us one of the motorcyclists was killed in that crash. The other was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. The accident caused the highway to close for hours while investigators worked on the scene. Police are still working to determine what caused the motorcyclist to lose control. Police are also investigating a three vehicle crash that sent two people to the hospital. Police tell us the driver who caused the crash was detained on suspicion of driving under the influence. Happened just before 10 last night, the intersection of Bartmer Avenue and Ben Russ Boulevard. That's on the northwest side. Police say a truck was traveling south on Ben Russ when it hit another vehicle, causing it to hit a parked car. Witnesses told police the truck was traveling at a high rate of speed before that crash. The driver and passenger of the second vehicle were taken to a nearby hospital. At last check, the driver is in critical condition and the passenger has non-life-threatening injuries. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will hold a roundtable discussion and deliver remarks at Houston Methodist Hospital. He will also provide an update on the COVID-19 vaccination efforts in Texas. It's happening this afternoon at 1215. Be sure to tune into the news at noon for more information. Today is the start of a historic week, the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump are set to leave the White House and President-elect Joe Biden is set to be sworn in as the 46th President of the United States. But this will be a unique inauguration day for a number of reasons. Yeah, a bit of an understatement, isn't it? Max Massey joins us now to break all this down in the studio. Tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow is the big day. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for having me. And it's going to be a different look inauguration day for three main reasons. The pandemic, security concerns, and President Donald Trump's absence. First and foremost, inauguration Inauguration days are photographed as big crowd celebrations, shoulder to shoulder packed events. But because of this pandemic, you instead of the usual 200,000 tickets distributed to members of Congress and then passed out to their constituents, organizers will be allowed just over a thousand tickets, one for each of the 535 members of Congress and one guest each. Obviously, it's going to be streamed online and, and on air, but concerns about the virus numbers that are getting worse and worse around the country then warranted what is described as a difficult decision to limit the live audience that now will resemble the State of the Union. Next, security concerns. After the Capitol riots and multiple threats, an unprecedented level of security is being set up. Law enforcement on high alert for possible attacks and unrest. The D.C. mayor even asking public officials to discourage spectators from attending the inauguration, trying to stop any violence. Thousands of National Guard troops that you just saw, they're going to be placed around the seven foot non scalable fence surrounding the U.S. Capitol. And get this on top of that seven foot fence, razor wire. The National Park Service is keeping the National Mall closed. It's been closed since the 15th. It's going to stay closed until January 21st. And third, President Donald Trump will not be there. For the first time in more than 100 years, the outgoing president, Donald Trump, will not be attending the inauguration, a move that Biden says is good. President Trump plans to leave Washington tomorrow morning in a military-like send-off from Joint Base Andrews, from which he's going to head to Mar-a-Lago, his residence in Florida. We are learning this morning that President Trump has recorded a farewell address from the White House where he offers a list of accomplishments from his four years in office. Obviously, guys, on the national stage, this is a huge shift, but there's also a lot of local implications. I'm actually working on a story with Congressman Tony Gonzalez and Congressman Henry Cuellar talking about what the new Biden administration means for our communities and around San Antonio. Now, these are two lawmakers that our viewers voted in. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Max. Right now, it is 907, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Mortgage rates kicking off 2021 with record lows. What one expert recommends you do to take advantage? Go Spurs, go. The Silver and Black defeated the Portland Trailblazers last night, 125-104. 
We have highlights of a crazy game coming up today in the Spurs chat. From the National Guard arriving in D.C. to a surfer riding a 50-foot wave, our David Sears joins us for a look at today's morning headlines after the break. In your morning headlines, troops continue to arrive in the nation's capital, and a man has been arrested for living in one of America's busiest airports. A car slams into a house and starts a fire, and we're going to hang 10 in Hawaii. Our David Sears is here. Hey, good morning. Morning, yeah, David. A lot of us stuck here in San Antonio. Weather's nice, but... You know, Hawaii wouldn't be bad. Oh, it wouldn't be bad at all. Wait till you see these waves. Okay. Incredible. All right, first, but let's start with this. You're looking at troops deplaning from the back of a transport jet that had just landed at Joint Base Andrews. The troops are in Washington, D.C. to help protect the Capitol. You can see the National Guard troops going through some drills on the tarmac before heading downtown. There will be approximately 25,000 troops in D.C. protecting the city and guarding against any attacks during the inauguration tomorrow. The FBI has even vetted all the troops themselves. Troops have been arriving for over a week now all over the country is where they're coming from and they will continue to arrive through tomorrow morning and then be in place when the festivities get started. All right, now to a very odd story of the day. A man apparently had been living in a secured area of the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago for three months. That was until he was arrested over the weekend. According to prosecutors, Aditya Singh flew from L.A. to Chicago back in October, but because he was afraid of COVID-19 back in L.A., he didn't want to go, so he has been hanging out in the airport ever since. According to the assistant state attorney, passengers would give him food, but over the weekend, two United Airlines employees ran into him and then asked him to see if they could see his ID. He showed him one that was actually reported lost back in October. Singh was arrested. His bond set at $1,000, but airport security has a lot of explaining to do. How could something like this happen? Well, the reality is it shouldn't. You have any TSA administered airport, you have multiple layers of safety and security. Those men and women have been under-resourced, they have been under-trained, and they haven't been provided the equipment they need to do their job. And so I think it's really important that we don't dismiss this. Yeah, the Chicago Department of Aviation says Singh did not pose a security threat. He's 36 years old, actually has a master's degree in hospitality. He is currently unemployed and lives in L.A. with some roommates when he's not sleeping in O'Hare. But it does beg the question, what kind of accommodations did he have? Place to sleep, pillow, blanket, shower? Points to ponder, just questions to be asked. All right, let's take it to New York. This is an SUV that has crashed into a house. The SUV caught fire. Then the house caught on fire. Firefighters came to put it out. That's just part of it. There is a damaged police cruiser right there. The driver actually crashed into the cop car before slamming into the house. All right, for those of you stuck at home, this will get your attention. This is Hawaii, and yes, that is the dot right there. See that? That's a surfer, and that's a huge wave. We're off of Maui's North Shore. He's riding a 50-footer. This is one of the best surfing spots in the world to catch the big wave. Usually the big waves happen from November to March. Some of them can get up to 70 feet. The surfers can get up to 30 miles an hour. Look at that guy. What do they call, they call that the, the curl or something? Well, I'm, I'm not a surfer, so I don't know what they, but look, he's gone now. Now here he comes out of this thing. I, you know, imagine a 70 foot wave. <laughs> and going 30 miles an hour on a little piece of board. I, I'm scared of three foot. Yeah, that's, like, that's just we're that's being incredible. honest here. This is the part where we just watch from the shore, right? Yeah. Oh, it's goodness. Like, yeah, that's just it's beyond my comprehension. That's oh. amazing. Just and brave. It is. I mean, hey, back to that guy living at O'Hare. Uh -huh. It reminds oh me gosh. of Tom Hanks's movie, The Terminal. Oh, yeah. Where he's making right. cracker uh, saltine yeah. sandwiches with yeah. ketchup and all the different sauces, and somebody I, knocks it off right. the table. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a cute all right, movie. The character's name was Victor Navorsky. Ah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not really a laughing matter, but there is the other side of it. There, like, there yeah. is. It's just you, you do kind of wonder how wonder. that was able to go on for, for so long. Three months. Yeah. And that's why I say, we're, I mean, where, where was he just sleeping up against the wall? Or did, did, well, they, well in the movie, they helped him out. I they know. helped him out. But like, I mean, like the saying is, you're kind of hiding in plain sight. 
Yeah. So yeah. you just under a lot of noses there. David, thank you. Strange. All right. Hang 10. <laughs> keep, keep surfing. Yeah. Uh, 915 right now as we swing the camera around. And Justin mm -hmm. Horn joins us now with more on the rain. Yeah. And right before the newscast, we were looking at radar together. And uh, some mm -hmm. of these downpours are, are at least some of these showers look like they could be pretty significant downpours. Yeah, they're, they're going to drop some rain on some isolated areas. There's the mm -hmm. quick uh, hitting downpours and it, it may rain pretty hard for, you know, just couple a couple minutes, yeah, not, and, not, not long, and they're going to move along. But it is good to see, encouraging to see rain around the area, and uh, we'll see more of it uh, through today and into tomorrow. Let's get to the radar, show you where the rain is right now. Up around New Braunfels, we're seeing some downpours just to the uh, north and west of Seguin. We had a, a downpour earlier around Lavernia. Not seeing much around San Antonio at the moment, but there is drizzle out there that's not being picked up by the radar. So it's it's wet for the most part. The roads are wet. If you're going to be out and about traveling uh, around Gonzales, we've seen a few returns north of I-10, a couple showers there. As we zoom out, it doesn't look all that active, but it will become more active as we get into the afternoon. There's a frontal boundary right about there as it moves in. That should enhance our activity outside. We've got cloudy skies, a little bit of drizzle, 64 degrees. East southeast Julie winds at about seven miles per hour. That's bringing in a lot of humidity for now. Uh, until that front gets here, 62 Comfort, 62 Bandera, 63 Rio Medina, 68 Castroville, 67 in New Braunfels. But look up to the north and west. It is now 51 in Junction, 51 Fredericksburg, and 48 in Rock Springs. That front is through that area, and uh, we're seeing some gusty northwesterly winds behind the front. It should make its way to San Antonio. Looks like now, maybe early afternoon, and that will have a, a big impact on temperatures. Uh, we'll see the numbers tumble as we get later into this evening. Uh, dew points, as we mentioned, extremely high, and you can definitely pick out the front now with dew points in the 40s for Del Rio and Rock Springs. There's the big picture. A lot of cloud cover. It's going to be a cloudy stretch. I'm thinking all the way through Sunday, really, we're going to have quite a bit of cloud cover, so don't expect much sun over the next seven days. And we've got an area of low pressure off to the west. This is one of the reasons we've got some pretty decent rain chances here. Uh, we'll have southwesterly flow aloft. With that front in place, you get little disturbances working up and over, and that uh, typically gives you some rain chances, and that's exactly what we're dealing with. So here's what the computer models show. Uh, by this evening, decent coverage here along the front, and then you'll start to get some of that overrunning. Now, it looks like the best chance of rain, especially as we get into the overnight hours, is going to be west of I-35. and. This is an area that, that really does need the rain, so this is actually pretty good news. And then uh, eventually we'll still have some showers around noontime, and then I think by tomorrow evening we'll start to see a decrease in activity. Take a look at the rainfall potential from this uh, storm system, and this is through uh, about Friday or so. Uh, we're talking about an inch out west, three quarters of an inch, uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch here in San Antonio, and then some lower numbers off to the east. Those aren't huge numbers, but considering what we're dealing with here, we still have an extreme drought, Hondo Bandera down towards Carrizo Springs. That this is uh, this is pretty good news and hopefully decent coverage. Uh, forecasts for today: 68 degrees by two o'clock, 60 percent chance of rain. And then those numbers do fall off. 57 by six o'clock. We'll keep the. Uh, 60% chance in through tomorrow too. 55 on your Wednesday. That's it. 66 Thursday, uh, just the 30% chance. Friday looks fairly dry. Same for Saturday, but we'll get some more uh, rain chances in here. 30% chance Sunday and Monday, guys. Lots of rain. All right. Thanks, yep. Justin. 919, 66 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Tax season is right around the corner. What you need to know before you file in today's Money It's Personal series. And welcome back. It's 922. Tax season is right around the corner and you'll want to be prepared for some of the changes that are coming before you file. In this week's Money It's Personal, Ivan Herrera has some tips on what you can expect when you file this year and how you can get a quicker refund. The Internal Revenue Service will start to process 2020 tax year returns starting February 12th this year. 
The IRS will use the time before tax season starts to test its systems due to some tax law changes last year. With tax season approaching, the IRS is offering the following tips for a speedier refund. The agency says you should file your taxes electronically and use direct deposit to get your refund faster. IRS free file opened on January 15th. So, you're able to begin filing your return now if you have all the documents you need. If you're eligible for a stimulus payment, make sure to review the recovery rebate credit guidelines carefully. The IRS says tax preparation software should help you determine what you're due if you're eligible. Any advanced stimulus payments received separately are not taxable and they won't reduce your refund when you file in 2021. The IRS says the Where's My Refund tool will be updated on February 22nd for those claiming the Earned Income Tax Credit and Additional Child Tax Credit. The deadline to file your 2020 tax return is April 15th. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. If you're looking to buy a home, experts say now is the best time to do it. That's because mortgage interest rates are at historic lows. The average interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage dropped to 2.65% according to the company Freddie Mac. That's the lowest in nearly 50 years. Real estate investors say now may be the best time to buy a home or refinance. 15-year fixed rate mortgage also dropped 2.16%. Freddie Mac says rates for both a 30-year and 15-year are nearly a full percentage point lower than a year ago. I think this is a perfect opportunity for people that are in a situation where they have to rent uh, to maybe look at getting a mortgage instead of just renting. And real estate experts say that while the low rates are bringing more home buyers into the market, high demand and low inventory are raising prices. Felipe Mejia says buyers are can still take advantage of low rates and offset the steep rises in home prices if they expand their horizons and are flexible. Right now it's 925, 67 degrees. More head on GMSA at 9. Silver and Black had a phenomenal game against the Trailblazers, bringing home a win. A recap and highlights from the game still ahead. If you like sending messages the old-fashioned way, U.S. Postal Service just released some new stamps you may want to get your hands on. What they are, still ahead. So pretty. And after the break, a closer look at the agenda that Biden has laid out for his presidency. And checking the roads right now as we take a look at uh, I-10 near 1604. That might moisture is kind of hanging around, but right now the roads are generally still dry. Look a little wetter there at 1604 and Marbach. Welcome back. President-elect Joe Biden will step into the White House tomorrow with an unprecedented list of challenges to tackle. ABC's Karen Travers takes a look at the agenda that President-elect Biden has laid out for his presidency. Joe Biden plans to hit the ground running as soon as he's sworn in. The crisis of deep human suffering is in plain sight. And there's no time to waste. We have to act and we have to act now. Biden's top priorities, getting the COVID-19 pandemic under control and the economy back on track. I'm convinced we are ready to get this done. The very health of our nation is at stake. To do that, he's pledging for his first 100 days in office, 100 million vaccine shots, reopening the majority of kindergarten through eighth grade schools and calling on Americans to use masks. Biden last week rolling out an ambitious and very expensive relief measure that he wants Congress to turn into legislation for him to sign. Oh, I know what I just described does not come cheaply, but failure to do so will cost us dearly. It's a $1.9 trillion plan that includes $1,400 in direct payments to most Americans, $130 billion for school reopening, $160 billion to build a national vaccine program and boost testing. Biden also includes a top priority for Democrats, hundreds of billions of dollars in funding for cash-strapped state and local governments. Democrats will soon have the majority in both the House and Senate, but they are narrow majorities. And Team Biden has made it clear they want Republicans on board with what could be the signature piece of legislation during his first year. But that may prove difficult, with polls showing a majority of Republican voters falsely believe Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, is the rightful president. On the campaign trail, Biden promised aggressive action on his first day in the White House. We're going to work purposely, diligently, and responsibly to roll back Trump's restrictions starting on day one.
His plans include reversing signature moves by the Trump administration by rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, repealing the Muslim ban, eliminating the Trump tax cuts, reinstating DACA, and rejoining the WHO. A massive to-do list that will almost certainly be spread out over more than just one day. But the Senate has a major item on its own to-do list, the impeachment trial of President Trump on the charge of inciting insurrection, which could not just overshadow Biden's first moves in office, but prevent him from making them. Thousands of President Trump's supporters stormed the Capitol in an act of domestic terrorism. Intelligence experts believe they're planning further attacks. Biden has said he wants the Senate to move forward on his agenda and his cabinet nominees while holding the trial. I think they can do both. We're going to work closely with them to see how they can do both. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, let's go outside with live cam. And that kind of sets the scene for us, Justin Horn. I'm getting reports now of downpours around different parts of town, including earlier out by Bass Pro Shop. Yeah, not a surprise. So we've had these downpours moving through. They're, they're pretty quick moving, but they're going to drop some quick, brief, heavy rain and then move right along. We've also got some drizzle out there, too, some low-hanging clouds. We're not going to see much sun today. It's going to be a cloudy sort of damp day. Let's take a look at the radar right now. You see the showers. For the most part, it moved to the north now up there around Boulevardie and New Braunfels. So we're seeing a little bit of a break in the action. More activities get up towards Austin along I-35, now towards Gonzales and Howitzville at this hour. But with a frontal boundary dropping south, we are expecting more activity into the afternoon. That front right now is through Fredericksburg, through Rock Springs, through Del Rio. And it will make its way towards San Antonio probably after lunch, maybe early afternoon. And that's when temperatures may start to tumble a little bit later today. So we're going to put our peak as far as temperatures go around 2 o'clock. 60% chance rain across the board. And that goes for tomorrow too. Once that front moves through, northwest Julie winds will become gusty 10 to 20 miles per hour. How much rain are we going to get out of this? We'll take a closer look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Transky, there's I-37 at Jones. Things looking okay for now, but when that rain hits, be careful out there. Yay, it was a good night for Spurs fans. <laughs> Silver and Black beat the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, handily. David and RJ here to break down what turned out to be a most excellent game. <laughs> yeah, you always got all that enthusiasm for I Spurs. know, gotta love that. <laughs> right after the music hits. Yay! It's true. <laughs> hey, it was good. It was very good. You know what's sad about this whole deal? Hmm. What's sad about hmm. this whole deal, David? The soapbox is getting dusty. No, oh, that's okay. I got, that's true. I got, I got nothing. True. I Our know. confidence is high. <laughs> I've got nothing right now. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah. Well, it's a long season. I'm okay, sure that there'll be uh, some stuff here to uh, yeah. to worry about, complain about. But as Say far what? as yesterday. Uh, just a, an impressive effort from start to finish, and really, uh, as we've seen from the Spurs team, just a uh, an all-around team effort. Multiple guys scoring double figures. It really was uh, pretty impressive out there in the Pacific Northwest. Four guys, 20 or more. Yeah. What's the last time that happened? Let's see, Tim, Tony, Manu, and some other guy. Someone else, uh, George Hill. In, uh, George Hill, maybe. Probably. <laughs> Way back in when? 20? 20? What did you say? 2010? Uh, February of 2010 was the last yeah. time they had four guys. Four guys. Wow. The and the Spurs have a plethora of guys who are averaging double figures. Mm -hmm. I think it's. What did you say, seven? Seven. Seven yeah, guys averaging seven. double figures? Of course, that's the new game where you just go down, throw it up, and then head back down the other end of the court. You <laughs> hope it goes in and you score 130. But, you know, that's, that's the game of today. And speaking of, mm -hmm. that's what some of these veterans have had to adjust to. The veterans are, like, taking care of these young guys and making mm -hmm. sure they understand how you play the game, what you do on the floor, passing, and making sure you get everybody involved. And then they got to kind of play the other part of the game and give way to the young guys and let yeah. the young guys step up and do, and do their thing. So it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting dynamic between the four, you know, veterans and then the younger guys. Yeah, I, they basically call themselves, they don't call themselves, but everyone kind of refers to them as sort of the gray beards of the group. The Rudy Gay being one of them, Patty Mills, LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, but again, all those guys scored over double figures yesterday, and DeMar DeRozan, Rosen uh, as well. So just a full out uh, all team effort there as they uh, take care of business here. And as you said, David, that's been one of the biggest things is just finding that sort of balance between when the veteran guys really need to step up and sort of also just letting the young guys maybe, you know, uh, find their way through these uh, through these games. We try to go out there and set the tone early, older guys and make sure you know, it'd be one of those games that we, we take control of, you know, what the challenge is every single day that we that we got to go through with all, all this COVID situation. 
not playing in front of fans, traveling different. So much, so many things are different. So um, what we sit in that is definitely it's a, it's a positive standing, but we all know we can do a lot better. Yeah, right now, though, they're, they are in fifth place in the West. Who would have thunk that? And they're, they're two games above 500. So, yep. And their mm -hmm. road record is just phenomenal when you consider they went on that five-game road trip and won four of those, and, and now we're on a two-game road trip to beat Portland. And, you know, DeMar was talking a little bit about the young guys and, and the older guys, and, and we mentioned it being a dynamic. And they have to find that fine line between – do you let the guys go and kind of make some mistakes so they can learn? And when do you correct them? And when do you, you know, kind of get on them for, for making a bad pass or taking right. a, a bad shot or something? So you got to hand it to these, to especially the four veterans that you mentioned, LaMarcus and Patty and, mm -hmm. and DeMar and, and Rudy Gay, and, and trying to make all those adjustments to make sure these guys are, are coming along in the correct way. Yeah, Patty Mills actually uh, also broke a record yesterday for the most three-pointers uh -oh. off the bench with one uh -oh. team. Whose record he broke. did he break? Uh, that would be the great Manu Ginobili. Uh -oh. <laughs> what? His former teammate, wow. yes. And, Ma Manu, and Manu, Manu actually Manu. tweeted out his uh, congratulations to Patty <laughs> yesterday. It just goes oh, wow. to show that. Uh, yeah, Patty's been great coming off the bench. He talked yesterday about sort of his role uh, and really kind of learning from Manu yeah. that that's basically what you have to do. Sacrifice, come off the bench, and help the team as much as possible. I do miss the Manu, 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 Manu. Yes. Manu, Manu. You could do it, David. You'll just probably be the only guy in the room doing it. <laughs> like, we're, I you know what? I bet him. Manu would help me. Yeah. He would. He knows it. He we would. Could, yeah. we, could, we could get him on Twitter, and we could just do the Manu song together. <laughs> right. That would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> Uh, fun, that would be it? awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Spurs take care of business against Portland. They now play the Golden State Warriors tomorrow. This is going to be an interesting game because Steph Curry is back for Golden State. Uh, Draymond Green has played well. And we've seen over the years that Golden State had really kind of been a thorn in the Spurs side. Yeah, the, yeah. In the Steph Curry's a thorn years. in the Spurs side. You remember, was it a couple of weeks ago, he was shooting threes at practice and made like 100 and something from the corner? I didn't see yeah, it, but I believe yeah, it. He made, yeah. he made like 100 in a row. <laughs> Hundred and something in a row from the corner at practice, shooting yeah. three. Steph Curry did. Oh, yeah, goodness. I mean, so you know, good stuff just, there. The guys so. were not out to lunch yesterday. It was a day game. But <laughs> they were out to lunch. No, good they stuff, were guys. in. Hey, they had room service. There you go. There you go. Bring, it also, to the, bring it to the room. I also have faith that at some point in the very near future. You will be cranky enough to bring back the yes. soapbox. Uh, I hope not. I, I hope back. not too. Yeah. But it stays right there. I, I'm just keeping it real. Well. And by the way, we were we were all over Yaka Pertle the other day, yeah, eleven and seven. Mm. Right. We had thirteen and eleven. And then he follows that up with 11 and 7. So, so see, what can't get on him. I mean, that would have been the soapbox. Right? RJ yeah. and David, you guys have provided the Yaka Pertle spark that was missing. Of course. That's it. Yes. You heard about you it. Must watch. Said, you must watch the. Uh, I got to yes. play better. I don't, I don't want to get <laughs> soapboxed. Or we can at least pretend no. to give you credit. No, that'll work. That'll work. We'll take no, it. Hey, yeah. congratulations. They're, they're yeah. A long way to go, but, you know, they're off to a Absolutely. really good start. Yeah. Bravo, guys. Good awesome. performance Yay. yesterday. So, Stephanie, how about a. Yes. Go Spurs, go. Of course. Go Spurs, go. Yay. It's going to be. Come on. There we go. That was yeah. it. That's the way to do it. Come on. <laughs> I'm excited about the win yesterday. Still early in the season, yeah. boys. Give her time. <laughs> yeah. 939, 67 up. degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. The U.S. Postal Service releasing new stamps with images from NASA. The details after the break. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. Get ready to revolutionize your bathroom experience and stop using toilet paper. How do you do that? With a bidet. The Slim Glow Bidet Attachment by Bio Bidet also features a night light. Bio Bidet believes that everyone deserves a clean and comfortable bathroom experience. You'll get everything you need to transform any toilet in your house. It's an easy DIY installation. Place the attachment and connect directly to your water supply with a provided brass adapter and braided metal hose. Requires no electricity, no wires, no extra plumbing, no hassle. The bidet has pressure control dial knobs, plus you'll save a bundle on all of the toilet paper that you won't have to buy. Now the retail price, $79. The case at deals price, $49.99. That is a 36% discount. Head over to caseatdeals.com for this deal, plus many more. How? How? How does it? <laughs> Man.
it's got a nightlight, so. A nightlight, yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> Welcome back, 944 in your morning consumer news. One of the largest jackpots in U.S. history will grow even bigger since there was no winner for Friday's drawing of Mega Millions' $750 million top prize. Jackpot has now increased to $850 million. That's the third largest jackpot of all time. The next Mega Millions drawing is tonight, followed by Powerball tomorrow. There's some good news for stargazers, or rather sky gazers, who still like to send messages the old-fashioned way. U.S. Postal Service is shining a spotlight on our sun in 2021. Mm -hmm. NASA's images of the star at the center of the solar system can be found on Forever Stamps, and the 20-stamp set is comprised of 10 images. Very pretty. Very colorful. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Justin joins us now. Yes. What? Are you still perplexed too? No. He's laughing, okay. at, he's laughing at the sun, right? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to save Maybe you. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Rain, anyway. storms. Yeah, could there's get that. Wet. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This stuff sprays down. Yeah. Oh, God. Got some showers out there right now. Nicely done, Mark. Uh, <laughs> these are moving off to the north and uh, moving away from San Antonio right now. Uh, we have had a little bit of drizzle, some cloud cover here across Bear County. But most of that is, uh, again, to our north at this hour. We're seeing some activity around Austin, some pretty decent downpours, too, just to the east of Austin. And I think we're going to see a little bit more coverage as we get into the afternoon. Funnel boundary will be moving in. That'll give us the lift that we need. Also, a few returns starting to show up there across the hill country. And the outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, 64 degrees at the airport, 65 Stinson, 67 Kelly, 66 at Randolph. Still looking at an east-southeasterly wind, but that will turn around to the north and west as that front comes through later today. 63 Comfort, 62 Kerrville, and then behind the front, you see the numbers coming down. 48 in Rock Springs, 51 right now, Junction 58 in Del Rio. Uh, there is a, a good southeasterly wind around 5 to 15 miles per hour at the moment, but the winds will be even stronger with that front right now, 10 mile per hour wind in Rock Springs. I think we could see some gusts up to around 20 miles per hour when the front uh, makes its way uh, through San Antonio. Uh, you see some of the showers and we'll zoom out some. There is some snow up there across the Texas Panhandle. That's associated with the upper level low, which is out to the west. We've got a lot of ingredients coming together here. Uh, to, to give us the, these chances for rain. The front stretches across uh, the Dallas area down towards Del Rio. And again, it should make it here, I think, just after lunchtime, maybe early afternoon. And uh, with that, we'll see more coverage of showers and storms. This is around 6 o'clock. And then tonight, as some disturbances work through, we should see even better coverage. And that'll be out to the west of San Antonio, where I think we'll see some of the heaviest of the rain. Places like Rock Springs, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, over towards Uvalde. And those are all areas that certainly need the rain. And we'll still have chances here in town. Now, that'll go through tomorrow. But by tomorrow evening, uh, we will start to see rain chances come down a little bit. Uh, as far as rainfall potential, we're talking about close to an inch out west, maybe about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch here in town. And then you'll see lower amounts off to the east. So kind of backwards of how we typically see things around here. But again, those are areas out to the west that uh, certainly need rain. Have and have been in drought. 60% chance of rain today. We'll see those temperatures peak, I'd say around 2 o'clock, 68 degrees, and then the, the temperatures start to tumble a little bit. 64 o'clock down to 57 by 6 o'clock, and northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll go 55 tomorrow behind the front, 60% chance of rain, then a 30% chance Thursday, 20% chance Friday. So Friday and Saturday, uh, probably our lowest rain chances, but they'll pick back up again Sunday and Monday. We'll get another disturbance rolling in and yet another front. And, uh, you know, this, this feels like a spring like pattern. It does not feel like winter at all. No, but tomorrow a little cooler than today. Yes, indeed. So we'll take it. Thank yep. you, Justin. Respect. 948, 67 degrees. We'll be right back. Good job, Justin. <laughs> Premiering in 2019, the Great Depression era thriller Dreamland has made it to home video after its digital release in the fall. Margot Robbie stars as a fugitive who seduces the teenage bounty hunter trying to take her in. Dreamland drops on DVD and Blu-ray January 19th. We're trying to locate a Donnie Wee boy. He married our son's widow. 
got our grandson with him. Kevin Costner and Diane Lane star in the drama Let Him Go. Costner and Lane set out to save their grandson in the neo-western drama based on the novel by Larry Watson. Let Him Go is out January 19th digitally with a physical release to follow in February. Don't let last year define who you are this year. Start new. Start fresh. You know I can't work out dude in Ramadan. Releasing on VOD Friday is what might be the first rom-com about a gay couple taking place during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. Breaking Fast premiered in March 2020 at the Cinequest Film and Creativity Festival and currently holds a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I don't know. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, actor Leslie Odom Jr. joins us. He'll tell us about his latest movie, One Night in Miami. We'll see you on live. And we invite you to join us for our virtual Mental Health Awareness Town Hall. We will have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. It's all on Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. You can find more information at quesacommunity.com. As Justice has been talking about, we do have some rain showers here and there in the area. It depends on really where you're at. If we've got uh, wet highways right now, hard to see on many of these trans guy ca uh, camera shots, but it is safe to assume we will have wet highways at some point today. And as we head into the evening commute fair, Justin. Yeah, fair to say for sure. And, and we'll have some more shower activity. I think this afternoon things have kind of quieted down for now, but a 60% chance uh, later today, front comes through. It'll be cooler tomorrow. Cooler and breezy, 55, 60% chance of rain, then a 30% chance Thursday. Lower chances Friday, Saturday, and then we'll pick the rain chances back up Sunday and Monday. So pretty busy week. This is more of an active pattern that we're in, guys. You guys remember before the holidays, we told you about that new store that was coming over by Wonderland of the Americas Mall. We had questions about when it was going to open. We knew the location, but we just didn't know the when part. That's right. It's happening this Friday, opening on Friday, January 22nd. This is Black Friday deals and discount store in San Antonio, and that's the grand opening date. It's already opening now. Yeah, the popular uh, store in Houston announced this second location in San Antonio back in December. It's at 100 Crossroads Boulevard in Balcones Heights. That, of course, is the uh, suburb there out there at 410 and I-10. It's not in the mall itself. Mm -hmm. It's at a strip center nearby uh, as well. And the store will offer steep discounts on items six days a week. Uh, all the items available for, for purchase are the same price no matter what. Uh, an official with the San Antonio location said on Facebook that all products are allowed to be inspected and tested by customers before purchase to see if the item works. Yeah, the price, and now here's the deal, and, and I know San Antonio's, we love a deal. The price of the items change every day according to the day of the week. Price for every item store on a given day is... It, it changes. Oh, oh, I clipped that part of the article. I know. I was noticing that on my. <laughs> yeah. So the, <laughs> it's, it's, it's on like our one website. one day a week. Mm -hmm. It's like ten bucks, and then the next day it's like five bucks, and, and then it, the, there there's some days where it's maybe like a dollar or something like that. And it switches every every week. So the Black Friday deals though will be closed on Thursdays mm -hmm. to allow for items to be restocked. To be restocked. Yeah. So right. wait, the the same merchandise is the is a different price depending on yes. what day. Yes. Yes, it changes every single day. So the longer, basically, I think the merchandise is in the store, the lower the price goes. I see. So if you go shopping on the cheaper day, then some of the stuff may not be there. That's yes. true. Got That's it. true. So we're going to have to check back uh, early and often. But again, there's that one day that is going to be closed. Again, this is over at going to be over at 100 Crossroads Boulevard in Balcones Heights. It's called Black Friday Deals and Discount Store. Yeah, opening this Friday, so yep. check it out. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.